Today, we're going to be talking about French imperialism, the U.S. Civil War, historic concepts of masculinity, and the fashion industry. What object could touch on all of these topics? Hi, my name is Emma, and today we're going to talk about the Zouave pattern. These jackets are made for different ages, but they're all inspired by the same thing the Zouave pattern. The American fashion trend that you see here actually has its roots in French imperialism. When the French decided to colonize Algeria, they wanted to use local soldiers as well as soldiers that they brought from France as part of their invasion. By 1831, they were able to recruit a unit made up largely of the Igoawan, a Berber people. Though some accounts state that the French were interested in the Igoawan because of their reputation as elite fighters, they did not actually intend to give the local soldiers any real power in the army. The Igawawin were always commanded by a French officer, and eventually almost all of them were replaced by soldiers from France. During this period, the French appropriated the Igawawin's traditional style of dress in order to create the uniforms for this unit. The history of the word Zouave is relatively complicated. In Arabic, Igawawin was then written as Zouawa. In French, it was written as Zouawa, but spelled differently. Over time, that French Zouawa turned into Zouave, and thus the name for the uniforms, the style, and the unit was born. During the Crimean War, people in the United States saw depictions of the French in their Zouave uniforms and became very interested in getting those type of uniforms for themselves. The Zouave style became very popular in the United States during the Civil War, and not just in how people were dressed. A bunch of units actually named themselves after the Zouaves, like the 11th New York, which named themselves the Fire Zouaves, and the 9th New York, which was Hawkins Zouaves, which is where this coat came from. One of the most interesting details about this uniform becomes apparent when you look inside. The soldier who wore this uniform wrote his initials and his company number on the inside lining of this jacket. From that, we can tell that this uniform belonged to James Brainerd. Brainerd was born in New York, which is why he enlisted in the New York 9th Hawkins Zouaves. But afterwards, he moved to Northampton, and he's actually buried in Bridge Street Cemetery. The Zouaves weren't just popular when it came to military uniforms. In the 1850s United States, there were Zouave songs, there were Zouave dolls, and people even dressed up as Zouaves in theatrical productions. This jacket was created to be used in military service, but as is probably apparent by the size, these two were not. They were both intended to be worn by children. Now, it was pretty common to create child-sized versions of adult uniforms for children to wear in their daily life. That's what this is. It was intended to look like a pretty elaborate Zouave military uniform. This utilizes patterns that would have been used on a Zouave uniform, even though it's just intended as a jacket. You can see that among these three jackets, there are some common features. All three feature an elaborate design, even though the ones for civilian wear are considerably more elaborate than the actual military uniform. They all feature patterns that are on the same position on the wrist, they also all have a similar cut in terms of the edge of the jacket, if you notice the rounded edge at the bottom of each of the coats. What's also interesting about this jacket is its color. It's a little faded, but if you look closely, it's quite a distinct pink. Now, when this jacket was made, pink was actually considered to be a very masculine color. The idea was that pink was the color of hardiness, and that that was a quality that was male. So coloring this jacket with military patterns pink is actually part of the same image. The image of the Zouave was very tied up with ideas of masculine bravery and ferocity. That the original unit was known for how fiercely it fought. And that's probably part of why people were interested in children wearing these clothes that this was a way they could play act at the kind of bravery they wanted them to have as adults. In a way, all of these outfits are the same idea, but they also show a progression, that we're seeing a military pattern filter into civilian society, both through people dressing up as though they're in the military, but also by using those patterns in civilian fashion. 
The Zouave style is part of a trend of military-inspired civilian clothing, but it's also part of a long history of white-dominated clothing industries appropriating clothing that originated with people of color. That means that what you're seeing on this table isn't the whole picture. I love putting these outfits together so we can talk about how they're similar and how they're different and what they mean, but the full story of the Zouave style is much bigger. What you see here, it's really just how this larger story about fashion and imperialism touched Northampton. 